we kind of start to live in this bubble and we think everything is hunky dory and we, we, you know, we think everything is love and light and boom, when darkness strikes, you have nowhere to go, right? And then you have hit rock bottom and then you hit rock bottom a hundred times and you still don't learn that it's not all about just the love and the light, right? There are aspects to ourselves that we need to integrate and bring into the heart that's then gonna allow the love and the light to show up in our lives in a more integrated way. The shadow needs to be integrated with the love and the light. The right thing to do instead of wanting to be X, Y, and Z is to go inside, right? And look at who we are at that moment and how can we be more accepting of whatever is happening in that moment for us. Because sometimes anger is inevitable. Lust is inevitable. Um, this whole concept of living a perfect life is a fallacy. And what I mean by that is enlightenment as it's marketed today uh, in the self-help industry is toxic. Um, you don't chase after enlightenment. Enlightenment is something that happens to you and other people acknowledge. And what is working and what is not working and pivot so that you're not in this fixed mindset of, oh, this should happen or I should be at this stage at this time. You know what? Maybe that stage that you're hankering for, that stage that you're looking out to get to, maybe it's best we never get there. And that's the power of the universe working in our favor. Hey guys, this is Coach KP and today I'm going to talk about enlightenment. So when we embark on this self-help journey and um, exploring spirituality um, and just looking to gain back some of the power that we may have given away in relationships or in life, um, there's this inevitable run-in that we have with um, this whole world uh, of spirituality where all of the, the gurus, the life coaches, and um, you know, all of the prominent figures in the industry are talking about enlightenment and you know, being superhuman and this and that. And it's so easy to get lost into thinking that we are not good enough because we are not enlightened or we are not good enough because we're not, we don't possess that superhuman power. Now, I'm not so much saying that if you really want to embody a quality that you see in a guru or whatever is being taught in these seminars or um, courses, that you shouldn't go after it. That's not what I'm saying necessarily. But if we're coming from a place of lack, if we're coming from a place of scarcity about not having enlightenment um, or not being Buddha and not being like Christ and all of, you know, what happens in the self-help industry, not being superhuman, not being able to perform at, at a 10x possibility, and then we are ending up beating ourselves up for it, that's really defeating the purpose. And that's not self-acceptance, right? Even if we want to improve and we are doing that from a scarcity mindset where we're looking at all of the things that we don't have and we try to get there because we think we're missing out or we think getting there is going to make life easier or getting there is going to establish us in a certain sort of um, on top of that hierarchy that we are comparing ourselves against. That's an act of self-harm. That's an act of us pushing ourselves towards something that may not ever be meant for us. And what I mean by that is enlightenment as it's marketed today uh, in the self-help industry is toxic. Um, you don't chase after enlightenment. Enlightenment is something that happens to you and other people acknowledge. Right? Enlightenment isn't something that I can 
I can claim that I have. I mean, Buddha didn't go around claiming that he was enlightened. Other people saw that. Other people saw the levels of compassion he had in himself. Same thing with Jesus. Jesus wasn't, was neither a Christian nor he went around claiming that he was a Christian and everybody should follow him. The following just happened as, a, as an effect of Jesus being Jesus, right? So do this meditation for enlightenment or do this me meditation for absolute peace is absolute garbage, right? Listening to that, trying to become the epitome of success, even in that spiritual realm, uh, in, is, is not spiritual, right? That's a materialistic belief, and that's a barrier to actually reaching enlightenment, You're actually reaching the heights that's above all heights. Marketing material and what you see on camera, what you see on Instagram, what you see on social media is not real life. I mean, there's so much going on out there that makes people that are on camera look perfect. You know, you look at me, you're looking at me right now, we're interacting in an asynchronous manner where you're seeing my transmission and you are in a certain state of mind, whether you're happy, sad, angry, hungry, whatever that may be, you're in that state, you're watching me, you're perceiving me from your filters, right? When we see these gurus and, um, um, and, 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 and celebrities and, and, and visionaries, we are attuned to looking at them as somebody that we, we should aspire to become and then their lives are so much more superior than our lives are currently, right? Especially if we're going through misery or pain. It's so easy to discount our experience as a fulfilling experience because we are so um, pain averse as a society. We don't want pain. We don't want to look at pain. We are chasing after pleasure most of the time. And what happens is we get pain, we get jarred, right? This is jarring experience. Pain is a jarring experience for us. And then what happens? Like you start comparing yourself with all of these things that you don't have, we don't have. And what that ends up doing is getting us further down into that rabbit hole. The right thing to do instead of wanting to be X, Y, and Z is to go inside, right? And look at who we are at that moment and how can we be more accepting of whatever is happening in that moment for us. Because sometimes anger is inevitable. Lust is inevitable. Um, this whole concept of living a perfect life is a fallacy, right? And, and that's so hard for people to swallow, especially after you've walked in this path and you've seen actual changes happening in your lives year after year after year, and still some of these things are not moving, right? Some of these basal qualities are not moving. Some of these um, qualities have not diminished, diminished past a certain point. It's so easy to beat ourselves up, but the obstacle is the journey, right? The obstacle is the way. So when we are not able to release something that needs to be released, and we've been doing the same thing over and over and over again, and we are still not able to release whatever that is, and it's time to pivot, time to have a different outlook, time to get a different sort of ideology around that, right? You need to be able to analyze what is happening in your life and what is working and what is not working and pivot so that you're not in this fixed mindset of, oh, this should happen or I should be at this stage at this time. You know what? Maybe that stage that you're hankering for, that stage that you're looking out to get to, maybe it's best we never get there. And that's the power of the universe working in our favor, right? The universe is constantly guiding us towards what is right for us. So if we've hit a, a, a rock bottom or if we've hit a ceiling of some sort and we're not able to go past that, doing more of what we've been constantly doing is, is, is just, it doesn't make any sense. So I urge people in the self-help journey to... Look at the marketing material, understand 
what you may be able to gain out of that program class association with this person and take it and then whatever you cannot gather at that time period know that it wasn't meant for you so don't go around looking for something that they're promising and you're not receiving and beat yourself up for that right because these concepts becoming a bodhisattva or getting an enlightenment um, enlightened experience what all of all this is doing is making you chase for peak experiences right making you chase for things that are fleeting and i'm not necessarily against peak experiences but what happens is Chasing peak experiences becomes some, some people's version of spirituality. And I'm not saying whatever your version of spirituality is good or bad, but there's, if there is a path to your higher self, chasing after something that somebody else prescribed for you, that's a guarantee that's not your path. And that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. We kind of start to live in this bubble and we think everything is hunky-dory and we, we, you know, we think everything is love and light and boom, when darkness strikes, you have nowhere to go, right? And then you hit, hit rock bottom and then you hit rock bottom a hundred times and you still don't learn that it's not all about just the love and the light, right? There are aspects to ourselves that we need to integrate and bring into the heart that's then going to allow the love and the light to show up in our lives in a more integrated way. The shadow needs to be integrated with the love and the light. So I've said a lot here today, but the real message is stop chasing after enlightenment. Stop chasing after bodhisattva, right? Your chances are if you are the type of person that is in the game to become enlightened, you, you really need to shift your paradigm and try to be who you are and then enlightenment will happen. So no chasing for enlightenment is, is what I want to share today. And, you know, it's not necessarily a ding on anyone that's in the path. I, I want to be clear because this is a strong message. And I am saying this because a lot of us spend or, or you know, waste a lot of time chasing after these concepts, right? When, when uh, in the Zen Koan, uh, one of the very popular Zen Koan says, if you see Buddha on the way, kill him, right? So all these concepts of what we are chasing for needs to be put to rest before stillness can arise. Let me say that one more time. All of the concepts that we know of, that we think is the way, needs to be put away for stillness to arise. And when stillness arises, the real stillness, when it arises, that's what's going to lead us to wherever it leads us to. It may or may not be enlightenment, I don't know, but that's the journey. Okay, Coach KP, peace.